Yesterday, as of the time I'm writing this video, a lot of FNAF fan games just got revealed. And when I say a lot, I'm talking 32 brand new FNAF fan games. If you are an active member of the FNAF community, you may already be aware that on November 26, the Fan Game Direct premiered. The Fan Game Direct was an event set up by a few members in the community in order to showcase all the newest fan games that will be coming soon. There were so many fantastic looking games that were shown off during this event. And with the premiere of these games trailers, we also got a lot more details on these games in the form of their game jolt pages. So I thought it would be a cool idea if I compiled my absolute favorite games from the event and went over their game jolt pages so that you guys can learn more about all the amazing FNAF fan games coming in 2023. Welcome to Freddy's by Marco Antonio is set to release summer of 2023. The game is a reboot of the first Five Nights at Freddy's and from what we've seen of the game so far, it looks absolutely incredible. Being a reboot, the game is taking many creative liberties such as giving the original cast of animatronics a very cool updated look. There are even a few new animatronics like this female version of Foxy and even Sparky the dog, a once infamous FNAF hoax now brought to life. With new animatronics also comes new gameplay. From the trailers we've seen so far, we can see that a lot has changed. There are now many more cameras and the building seems to be expanded out to have more rooms. There are now generators that we will have to keep charged as well as a ventilation system that we must keep track of. The game trailer also states that the game will have three new game modes extra shifts, secrets to be found, and a fleshed out custom night. The developer promises 2 plus hours of content which all looks fantastic. And looking at the devs previous work, FNAF 6 Freak Show, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that this game is going to be a blast when it comes out. The game jewel page also gives us a small peek at the story which I will read off right now. Welcome to your new career as a night guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, where fantasy and fun come to life for kids and grown-ups alike. The main attraction after the food and arcades is Freddy Fazbear and his friends. They are animatronic characters specifically to entertain children, but in the night, to keep their costs low, they wander throughout the buildings searching for new band members. You, as a night guard, must prevent if someone tries to rob the building, and prevent the animatronics from damaging valuable equipment in the night hours. For that, you have two mechanic doors at your side. Prevent them from getting into your office by closing them, but watch out, don't run out of power, or Freddy and his merry band will get you. Anti-Clockwise by Pan Pie is set to release September 1st of 2023. The game has you take the role of a maintenance worker slash security guard at Bark's Sunny Beach Summer Camp. There isn't much information on the game so far other than one trailer and some teaser images, but from what we can see so far, this game looks great. Judging just from the teaser images alone, the graphics look absolutely phenomenal. The HUD also has this cool green tint to it which really fits the game's dark atmosphere. Also from these teasers, we can see some of the gameplay features that will be present, such as a flashlight battery, cameras, a toxic meter, and what seems to be tasks that we will need to complete throughout the night. The trailer features mostly pre-rendered animated cutscenes, however this isn't completely a bad thing. From these animated scenes, we are able to see what some of the environments are going to look like at Sunny Beach Summer Camp, and we can also see the designs for a few animatronics, which I have to say look absolutely horrifying. I'm hoping that we actually get to see them animated in game like how we do in the trailer, and judging by the gameplay sections of the trailer, this game does seem to be using a more advanced engine than Click Team Fusion, so it's more than likely we will actually see these animatronics move around. Looking further into the gameplay sections, we can also see what looks to be a gas mask which will most likely help us with our toxicity meter, as well as a screen on our left which displays tasks for us to complete. These tasks consist of unloading parcels, searching for missing items, fixing broken parts, and creating labels. The lack of a timer on the screen makes me think that this game is going to have a similar gameplay style to FNAF 6 where the nights are actually task based instead of time based, which has me even more excited. I'm a sucker for FNAF fan games that take that gameplay approach as I find it much more rewarding and fun to play. 
So far, that is all we have to see for Anti-Clockwise, as we still are a little under a year away from its release, so make sure you keep an eye on the Game Jolt page for when more teasers are added. Euro, a developer on Game Jolt known for porting FNAF 4, Sister Location, Pizza Simulator, and Ultimate Custom Night to VR, is now bringing us a VR version of Grizzlies, a FNAF fan game made by Lester Tellez. If you have never heard of Grizzlies, the game picked up popularity as it was known as the political FNAF fan game. The game features a very unique premise and storyline that goes places I've never seen any fan game go. Looking at the trailer for the game, we can see that it is not just a simple port and actually features newly updated models which look absolutely phenomenal. The use of fur on these animatronics just makes them look so real. And the actual environment such as the office and all the locations on the cameras also look fantastic. It also looks like we'll be able to see the animatronics moving around on the cameras, judging by the trailer. The original Grizzlies also featured many cutscenes, which are now being recreated in a VHS style. I'm assuming these cutscenes will be handled by Baddington, as he was the one who did the teaser trailer for Grizzlies, however there is no confirmation on this on the Game Jolt page. Grizzlies did receive a fair amount of criticism when it was released due to the gameplay being way too easy, however there hasn't been any statements so far on whether or not the gameplay will stay exactly the same, but as someone who never got around to playing the first one, I can't wait to jump into Grizzlies VR and experience it for myself. Also coming in 2023 is the sequel to Grizzlies, Grizzlies 2, which so far from the teaser images and trailers looks to be one of the best produced fan games of the year. The Game Jolt page has nicely laid out a summary of the story and gameplay, so I will read those off now. Stricken by a deadly disease, Wilson will do anything to save his lover from death. This drive led him to the mysterious storage unit facility, All Storage, filled with urban legends and rumors fueled by employees going missing in the past few months. Wilson, now trapped inside with murderous robot mascots, must try to survive the night and find a way to escape this cursed place and reunite with his wife. With the help of Victor, a man with his own personal demons, Wilson will uncover the sinister truth of this facility and the origins of the animatronics roaming the halls. I can already see how some politics can be woven into a story like this, so I am very excited to see how it actually plays out once the full game launches. The gameplay description reads, Grizzlies 2 is an evolution from Grizzlies 1 in every way possible. The player will have to roam the multi-floor building with caution to avoid the gaze of murderous flowers and toads. From the endless halls of storage units to the dark and damp basement, the player will be forced to explore and solve puzzles to progress in the story. Grizzlies 2 is a mix between exploration and sit and survive games, forcing the player to use their wits and skills if they wish to escape the dreaded facility. So yeah, it looks like Grizzlies 2 is going to be a point and click free roam style FNAF fan game, which has me very excited. Looking at the devlogs on the Game Jolt page, we can actually see some of the environments we will be exploring throughout the game, and I have to say, these look great. We can also see some of the animations for the animatronics, and these look absolutely horrifying. Especially this flower guy, I don't know, something about his design is just so creepy to me. Now there isn't a set release date yet for this game, but we will most likely be getting one in a few months, so make sure you follow the Game Joel page to keep up with any more updates we get in the future. Super excited to check this one out. Next up is Korra 5 by Aquanta Films, and this game is only beginning production, so I'm not even sure if it will release in 2023, but it was just too cool to not include, because this game's trailer seriously blew me away. The production of these fan games is seriously getting out of hand. I mean, this basically looks like real life. Remember when fan games used to look like this? Anyways, the synopsis for the game reads, New message from star underscore Mako. Hey John, what's up? It was nice seeing you. I hope the drive home was alright. I wanted to tell you more about the new friend you just got. It's a pretty old audio animatronic, mascot of some gaming lounge called the Arctic. I've never gone personally, but I studied its story for days. I figured you'd be interested. Do you want to know more? There's also a small description of the story that reads, January 5th, 
2010. A young engineer gets his hands on a piece of modern entertainment, an audio animatronic by the name of Polar K Wonder. 19-year-old Jonathan spends his afternoon slash night attempting to reprogram the bear. He tests the movements and audio correlation with the show tapes, and even searches the web for lost media of the character. But there's something wrong, way beyond the old technology and air compression. A dark truth is to be uncovered with the resurgence of this new friend. So far, this story sounds very interesting to me. Never before have we seen a fan game where the main character actually buys an animatronic and brings it home only to find out that it is deadly. It almost kind of reminds me of that scrapped FNAF movie script where the kid buys Freddy from a pawn shop. But anyways, as for the gameplay, the gameplay description reads, Korra 5 is a story-driven, interactive experience that falls under the Five Nights at Freddy's genre. Players complete programming sessions, linear mini-game scenarios with set objectives, to progress through the main narrative. Out of the session system, players are able to traverse other environments and able to prevail through the overarching story. So yeah, it looks like this game is going to be taking a more story-based approach, which is absolutely fine. It's always nice every once in a while to get a FNAF fan game that's all about how the story is and doesn't mainly focus on the gameplay. And I'm really excited to see where this story ends up leading to. I also find it very interesting that the main gameplay of the Knights will feature programming sessions, which I assume will be the player working on his newly purchased animatronic. Unfortunately, that is all we have to go off for now. However, from the very little we've seen from the game so far, I have to say that this looks fantastic, and I am beyond excited to check this one out as soon as it releases. The Fazbear Facility by Fanchon Games is set to release sometime in 2023. The story of the game is as follows. After a terrible occurrence that happened at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, all restaurants were forced to shut down and be abandoned. Many of the animatronics were shipped to a facility brought out by Fazbear Entertainment. Help was wanted for looking over the facility, but you wanted to be there for a different reason. Fate has brought you back to your darkest days. You lost something on that day, and whatever or whoever it was is long gone. Other than this, there is not much information on the game besides these two audio recordings which can be heard on the Game Jolt page. Both of these audios come from Jackson T, who is our main character. Jackson claims that he got an invitation in the mail and that he is going to sign up to get more information. In the second audio, he says that he responded to the offer and says that he is trying to find redemption. Other than these very obscure teasers though, all we have to look at is the trailer and teaser images. The trailer is mainly just an engine showcase with not much pertaining to the actual game, however just from the visuals alone this game looks very promising. It looks like we will once again be going against the withered animatronics from Five Nights at Freddy's 2, as well as Spring Bonnie who we can see present on posters around the building. The gameplay judging from our very brief look at it seems to be a sit and survive style FNAF game. We can toggle on and off our fan, monitor the building through the cameras, as well as close our blinds. I'm really curious to check this one out as I really want to know why our character is trying to find redemption and how signing up for a job at the Fazbear facility is going to help him with that mission. Mary's Arcade 2 by Sunday is set to release sometime very soon, most likely early 2023. This game takes place a few years after the original Mary's Arcade with the establishment opening back up. We will see the return of the old Mary's Arcade cast in the form of withered versions alongside new sleeker designs for the animatronics, very similar to how FNAF 2 was handled. So far we haven't been shown too much of the game, but it looks absolutely amazing. I love how many different directions the animatronics can come from, and seeing them stack up behind the window is absolutely terrifying. Also, I just have to say right now, the sound design in this game is phenomenal. Just listen to how these animatronics sound in the trailer. It almost reminds me of how COD zombies sound, if you guys are familiar with that. So just take a listen.
In terms of visuals, they look absolutely perfect in my opinion. I love the art direction this game takes, whether that's with the UI for the cameras, how the office looks, or the way the animatronics are designed. I just think everything looks fantastic. As for how the game will actually play or what the story will be about, we have basically nothing. We have just a few small descriptions of how the gameplay will actually be, but that's about it. And that's honestly fine in my opinion. The fact that I know absolutely nothing about this game gets me really excited to go in blind on my first playthrough, and I will definitely be checking it out as soon as it releases. Reps by Sandwichware will release sometime in 2023. So far we only have a brief trailer and small description on the Game Jolt page, but so far it looks very promising. The story description reads, It's 1992. Percy Davidson suspects the disappearance of his two brothers were tied to the Reps establishment. Percy used to work the night shift, so he was provided a key to the back entrance. One night he goes back to Reps and enters through the back door. Percy would soon find out that the animatronic characters have taken new life. This story premise sounds really cool to me. I like the idea of the character having a personal connection to the area, and I'm also guessing that our character's two brothers are actually the ones possessing the animatronic scene in the trailer, and seeing that all unfold throughout the game's story will be very interesting to see. As for the gameplay section, it reads, The game is a survival horror game where you have to fend off decrepit animatronics from the 80s. But by using your cameras and vent mapping systems, it should be easy, yet a challenging task. Every night you survive, the animatronics become even worse to deal with. It's all worth it in the end, because you get to play a poorly made shovelware game after you complete your duties. The section that interested me the most about this was the line, you get to play a poorly made shovelware game after you complete your duties. I actually had to look up what that meant and apparently shovelware games are like poorly licensed games, which sounds really cool in the context of this game. If we get to play poorly made licensed games using the reps cast, I think that would be very interesting. And this would definitely keep me playing just to see them after every single night. We don't really get to see much of the actual game in the trailer, however the mystery of Rep getting dismantled does have me curious to see what's going on here. Really cool looking game so far, and I will definitely be checking this one out. Playtime with Percy by Fazzy Funbear is slated to release sometime in 2023. The synopsis for the game reads, after the failure, the latest entertainment establishment, Percy's Playhouse, you are called by your boss. He informs you that later this week, Percy is set to be completely demolished for good. So what's the catch here? Most of the place is cleaned out and ready for its name to be history. Fortunately, you are tasked with watching over the place for that week, making sure nobody breaks in, steals any valuable equipment, and that everything is accounted for before the demolishment on Friday. Everything needs to be in order, especially Percy, Poodle, and company. Playtime with Percy is a traditional style FNAF fan game with the primary gameplay structure being based around the pal Percy, a Tamagotchi-like toy. With the core gameplay loop being task-based slash end at your own pace instead of the classic survive from 12am to 6am. So yeah, a lot to be excited about for this game. Not only does it have an extremely unique and appealing art style, but it is also introducing a unique gameplay element in the form of the pal Percy, which is a Tamagotchi-like toy that we will need to take care of during the night. I really love this idea that a lot of indie horror games use where they take a children's toy and turn it into something that we must survive against. I'm also really happy that this game is making its gameplay task-based, as that gives it a better chance of the gameplay standing out from other FNAF fan games. This game is also said to feature a unique core mechanic, 5 unique post-night tasks, improved graphics and animation, a fully original soundtrack, cutscenes, bonuses, and extras. So yeah, there is tons of content to be excited about when it comes to playtime with Percy. I love how original this game looks and I'm very excited to check it out for myself. 
Now, in this video, I really wanted to hone in on the games that were just revealed during the fan game direct. However, I wanted to include this honorable mention section so I can briefly mention other fan games coming in 2023 that I'm very excited about. So here goes nothing. Pop Goes Evergreen, Jolly 4, Candies 4 possibly, I think it's coming out in 2023, Rat Race, FNAF Plus, Shadows Awaken, Pyro Illusion, Reptile Land, Forgotten at Fredbear's, Phobia Long Hours, Decadent Nights, Birthday at Freddy's, The Return to Freddy's Mockingbird, The Fazbear Investigation, Golden Memory 2, Bunny Hop, A Golden Pass Chapter 3, Final Hours 1983, and finally, Analog. All of these games look absolutely fantastic for their own respective reasons, and I can't wait to see all of these as well. Alright, so last but not least, we have The Return to Bloody Nights by Kazofsky, set to release sometime during February of 2023. Inspired by FNAF Plus, the original four FNAF games, and the books produced by Scott Cawthon, this game takes its own take on the timeline and crucial events of the Five Nights at Freddy's series. Brings back old style atmosphere and gameplay with introducing new mechanics by combining the best elements of official games. It's a reborn game from the previous one, Bloody Nights at Freddy's. The story takes place in 1983 at Fred Bear's Family Diner, around the time when the owners of the diner, William Afton and Henry Emily, were still good friends and partners who had just built up their restaurant featuring only two mascots. Springlock costumes were an innovation, and Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy were only just cartoon characters and didn't exist in the form of animatronics. After a while, one of the two men lost his sanity and began embarking upon a gruesome killing spree. You have to play as the new security guard at Fred Bear's diner, and you have to discover what actually happened the week before you were hired for this job. This is the event that changed the relationship between the two owners, and the well-known story of Five Nights at Freddy's begins. The game is also said to include features such as a story that's based on the original games and books, multiple endings, high quality graphics, all rendered on Blender Cycles, 8-bit minigames, cutscenes, custom night, and challenges including extra content with locations and characters. Everything about this game sounds so amazing to me. I love the idea of a fresh reboot of the series that incorporates things that we found out later on. And being able to see animatronics like Fred Bear, Spring Bonnie, and even the puppet being around during FNAF 1 times is really cool to see. I also think the visuals and production quality of the game are absolutely insane. The fact that this community is still producing such well-crafted fan games even this far from the release of the original game is just so amazing to me. Just a few more months until we are able to get our hands on this game and check it out for ourselves. I can't wait for this one and will for sure be playing it day one. Alright everyone, so that wraps up the best FNAF fan games coming in 2023. Let me know which games stood out to you the most and which ones you guys would like to see me cover on the channel. Next episode we will be going over Bondi's Barnyard which was released actually during the fan game direct and has some of the coolest concepts I've seen in a fan game in a while. So keep your eyes peeled for that video. Anyways that has been this video, thank you all so much for watching all the way to the end and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.